Welcome in my fellow fitness enthusiasts to today's instructional video coming at you from Revision Training LLC, where our mission is to make fitness accessible for you. My name is Tyler Marin. I'll be your instructor for today. I am owner of Revision Training, and I'm also a personal trainer, motivational speaker, and three-time Paralympic athlete. I'm really excited to bring this topic to you guys today. We're gonna to be talking about the things that you should understand and know when you're trying to lose weight. Okay, we're gonna go through some of the details, some of the basic facts. We're gonna to touch on some of the key points and I'm gonna give you guys some practical, applicable takeaways from today's video. Now, the first thing I wanna caveat with is there are people who get entire PhDs in this subject, right? So this. 20 minute video is gonna really skim across the surface of a lot of these details. But again, I want you to be able to take away some really practical things that you can work with today. So I'm gonna give you some real basic information and make sure that it's really clear and understood. So let's first off talk about what are people actually saying when they say, I want to lose weight okay what what is it that they're really going for okay, i want to uh break a couple of misnomers here and change your mindset a little bit about somebody saying hey yeah i really want to lose weight what that person is actually saying is they want to decrease their excess body fat so think about it this way if you said to me hey i, I want to lose weight and i said okay what if I was able to do this? Let's say I was able to take 10 pounds of body fat off of you and put 10 pounds of muscle in its place. Your body weight physically would not change. If you started at 150 pounds, you'd still be 150 pounds. But replacing that body fat with muscle, a lot of changes would happen in your body. First of all, muscle is a lot more compact. Okay, so that's one of the misunderstandings that people have i want to explain that real quick as we jump into this muscle doesn't weigh more than body fat a pound is a pound either way but muscle is much more compact so if we were able to exchange 10 pounds of body fat on you for 10 pounds of muscle your body would pull in right you would lean up tremendously people would be like whoa what happened to you you look so lean and fit and we put that 10 pounds of muscle across the body what you end up with is the exact same body weight, but a much more lean athletic look, okay? And generally speaking, 99% of the people that I worked with when a, as, as a personal trainer, uh, males, females, that's what they were going for. Nobody follows you around with a scale, right? So measuring your weight's not a bad thing. I have another video that talks about measuring progress and we go over some of these details in there. Measuring your weight's not a bad thing, but understand that if you have a goal of losing weight, 99% of the time, what you're really talking about is changing your body composition. Okay, so I want you guys to understand that right off the bat. And let's go ahead and talk about what that means as we get into this video. So when we talk about burning fat, losing excess fat, what is body fat? Because we, we have this kind of like, bad opinion of of excess body fat oh it's like nobody wants that we we all want to be lean and trim and fit i want you also to understand that body fat is not a bad thing in fact it's a beautiful design that we have that helps us survive right we've been programmed so that when we eat whatever energy we're not using at that exact moment get stored for later use and that's an a, that's a brilliant brilliant thing so our predecessors our ancestors our uh, hunter gatherers as they're out looking for their next meal and burning a bunch of energy the extra fat that they have in their body they can utilize for energy during times when they can't physically eat that food okay now fat has a lot of other purposes in your body um, fat helps with temperature regulation. Fat helps with protection of your organs, right? So you have to have some fat in your body. It's essential for life, okay? You can go without certain things, dietarily speaking. Fat is one of them that your body really needs. Um, if you lose too much fat, you can start to run into some major, major health issues, okay? So there's a happy medium here. There's a balance that we're gonna look for. 
but I want you guys to understand fat is not evil. It's not a bad thing, okay? It's really important for your body. Now, the difference between our society now versus our, our ancestors, number one, we tend to be much less active. We're not out actively hunting down our food. And number two, calories, energy, food is just so easy to come by in our modern society. Um, you can pick up your phone, hit a few buttons, and somebody will deliver 1,500 calories to your door within 30 minutes, right? So there, it's just so easy to come by. So this, this beautiful design, this mechanism we have in our bodies, now, uh, back then, it was, was a great survival tool. Now it's become a little bit of a burden. So that's the thing that we have to manage. So what that brings us to now is the idea of how do we manage our composition? How do we manage our body fat level, our percentage, and what should that look like? Like I said at the beginning, body fat is essential. You have to have body fat. If it gets too low, you can run into health issues. Now, healthy ranges for males and females is gonna differ, okay? Females will tend to have a little higher body fat percentage because of their design. Um, but generally speaking, males between 15 and 25% is considered a healthy range of body fat and females between 20 and 30%. So what does that mean? That means if you have a body fat percentage of 15% and you weigh 200 pounds, about 30 pounds of your weight comes from body fat. Okay. And that's totally fine. A lot of that fat's going to be again, surrounding your kidneys and other organs, helping to support them and cushion them. Um, all very, very good stuff, okay? And now, if that body fat percentage, say for a male, again, is above 30%, right? Then a lot of that fat is gonna be found around the belly, it's gonna be found around the hips and the legs, maybe around the neck and the chest. That's the excess body fat that we're really not interested in having, right? That's the stuff that can start to put pressure on our heart, it can start to hurt the joints, it can mess with your body's hormone levels. So there's a that's the excess fat that we wanna really target. So the million dollar question then, how do we reduce our excess body fat? And it really comes down to something so simple that it's almost grossly overstated. It, it's oversimplified, okay? So there's a lot to it, but it really does come down to this. It's energy in versus energy out. Okay, and there's a lot of ways we can break that down. Again, people get whole PhDs in this stuff, right? We're just, we're just trimming the surface. But energy in to energy out is really what it comes down to with excess body fat. Because that's all it is. Fat, again, is just stored energy. Okay, your body uses it for a lot of different things, but the excess fat that we think about are on our neck, our belly, our thighs, our butt. Uh, that it's all, <laughs> it's all extra. Okay, a lot of that is extra and that's what we want to manage. It's just extra energy. So if we increase the amount of energy we're using and decrease the amount of energy that we're taking in, then our body's going to start to go to those storage bins in our, in our cells and pull that out for energy and we're going to start to lose body fat. Now here's some practical things that we need to talk about to understand how we get our body to do that. Understand first that your body all the time, every day, no matter what, sun up to sun down, while you're sleeping, you're burning energy, period end. Your body, up, up to 70% actually of the calories that you're gonna burn in a day, and, and we'll talk about that in one second, but calories is just a, a unit of energy. It's just a measurement, that's all. It's a measurement of energy that comes from your food. Your body's burning energy every single day, every single minute, okay? This is called your resting metabolic rate or your basal metabolic rate. A few kind of different terms that slide into there, but essentially think of it as if you were having a super lazy Saturday, you're just laying around on the couch, hardly even moving, just watching TV, that would be your resting metabolic rate. You're really not doing much. You're getting up and moving around every once in a while, super light activity. Um, up to 70% of your calorie burn is gonna come from just your, your mind thinking, your heart pumping, your organs functioning. That's your resting metabolic rate, okay? Now, about 10% of your overall calorie consumption, your, your burn, okay, is gonna come from the thermogenic effect of food. 
So when you eat food, when you put energy in your body, it takes energy to process that food. So about 10% of your overall burn is going to come from the food processing that goes through your body. This is another good percentage. So we're already talking 75 to 80% of your burn an entire day is going to come from just things that you're naturally doing. We're not even talking exercise at this moment. Now, the next thing, the next major factor that goes into this is just going to be activity. Here's where you have the power to work on this equation. Here's where you have the ability to up your energy burn. And then we'll later talk about decreasing your energy intake. So 20 to 30% of your overall burn, more or less, depending on how the numbers play out, is going to come from your activity level. So walking, cleaning, biking, swimming, lifting weights, stretching, doing yoga, kickboxing, playing with the grandkids, kicking a soccer ball around, whatever you want to label it as, any type of activity that's above and beyond the normal movement is, is going to burn 20 to 30% of your total energy in a day. Okay, so those are the factors, the main, main factors that go into how much energy you're gonna burn. Now you can break some of those down, subdivide them. Um, your resting metabolic rate can be subdivided into your age, your gender, your body composition. Um, so, you know, males tend to burn a little bit more calories per day because males also tend to have a higher muscle composition due to elevated testosterone levels, right? So you guys start to see where PhDs come into play here. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of sub details. Um, the older we get, okay, there's, there's uh, uh, a statistic that um, beyond the age of, I believe it's 35, for anybody who doesn't do regular exercise, regular resistance training, you lose at least a half a pound of muscle every two years of lean, uh, of, of lean body mass, of muscle essentially. You lose a half a pound every two years if, if you don't maintain it, if you don't do training. So that means as we get older, our resting metabolic rate is going to generally decrease because we lose muscle tone. Okay, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that as we go forward too. But generally speaking, the one factor you can control is your activity level, okay? Some other little factors, we'll talk about that, but generally speaking, on a day-to-day -day basis, you become more active, you burn more energy, you're gonna control your body fat percentage better. You're gonna be able to reduce excess body fat. So while we're talking about that energy burn, your total daily energy expenditure, your TDE, TDEE, um, <laughs> Again, three major factors, right? Your resting metabolic rate, your thermogenic effect of food, and your activity level are, are the primary categories. Now I wanna talk real quick just about a couple other factors that slide in there. We already mentioned your composition, okay? So when we think about our general activity, and here's, here's a major takeaway I want you guys to think about. Most of the clientele that I worked with, okay, they come to me and they would say, I really want to lose weight, which again, we talked about, right? What that really means is they want to decrease their excess body fat. Totally fine, completely acceptable. So I would kind of work them through that idea, right? And what, what really we want to think about then is if you want to decrease your overall body fat percentage, let's think about changing your composition, okay? Because if you lose weight, just weight, but you, you lose kind of an equal amounts of muscle and body fat, right? But your, your weight comes down overall. You really haven't changed a whole lot about your body. You've just become kind of a smaller version of yourself. And so a decrease in overall weight, if you're losing muscle along with it, you're really not setting yourself up for success at that point. What you need to concentrate on are exercises that are gonna help you decrease your excess body fat but also increase your muscle tone, which will increase your resting metabolic rate, which will help you even when you're not exercising, you're gonna increase your overall energy burn. It's a really important concept to understand. So that begs the question then, what type of exercise is best to make sure that we're getting that right kind of burn? Okay, so quick recap, understanding that increasing your overall activity level, perfect. 
no matter what it is, um, you know, walk to the grocery store instead of taking the bus, uh, you know, take the stairs instead of the elevator. These are examples of just increasing your general daily activity, whatever that might be. You guys be creative with that. But when we take a moment, and you should be doing this multiple times a week, minimum of three times a week, more is better in this situation. But there should be time in your day where you say, okay, this 30 minutes, this 45 minutes, this is specifically for exercise. This is a, a time of my day when I'm going to push my body more to its limits to increase my, my activity, but also to challenge my cardiovascular system to build more muscle tone. So what should that activity look like? Now, if you, again, are a, if you're a runner, if you wanna do that long distance cardio kind of run, we're gonna talk about that in a second, totally, totally fine, right? But we wanna focus on exercises that are gonna challenge your muscles as much as your cardiovascular system. So real quick, let me break down the, the types of fuel that your body will use, the systems that your body goes through to produce the energy that it needs to, to do this extra activity, and that'll help kind of shape the way we want to do exercise. Okay, so let me geek out with you for just one second and understand that your body, your muscles function off of a compound that's called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, and your body produces ATP in essentially three primary fuel sources, three primary systems, okay? The very first is called the phosphogenic system. So this is considered the, the match strike of, of your fuel systems. It's very fast, very hot, burns out quickly. Um, phosphogen creatine is stored up in your, in your muscles and your, your body will grab that very quickly to produce ATP to contract the, the muscles. This will last up to about 10 seconds. Now this is where people will take in um, creatine supplements, for example, right? Because creatine phosphate, it'll, it'll, you'll store excess in your muscles, which will generally speaking, allow you to lift um, more weights, a little bit more uh, repetitions, okay? Allow you to hold on to the weight a little bit longer and that will help develop more muscle tone. So creatine phosphate supplements, it, that's how they function. Now once your activity extends beyond about 10 seconds then you start to activate what's called the glycolytic system now your body will then take glucose sugar from your muscles from your blood from your liver and it will start to break it down into pieces to produce atp now, the, the process is pretty complicated again there are people who get phds in this stuff um, but generally speaking, your byproducts are going to be adenosine triphosphate and lactic acid. Okay, lactic acid. Many of you have probably heard that term. Lactic acid is the burning sensation. Okay, I'm <laughs> lifting weights. I'm, I'm sprinting. Okay, your glycolytic system, you consider like a 400 meter, 800 meter sprint. Something that's a duration of up to two minutes. You're going to get a lot of burning, burning, burning in those muscles. And that's the buildup of lactic acid. It's a byproduct of, of creating ATP. So that's actually a, a good mechanism. And we can adjust that. We call it the lactic acid threshold. Like people who are more conditioned, it will take them longer for their body to get overloaded with that lactic acid feeling, which causes fatigue, which forces our bodies to slow down. It's actually a safety mechanism. Okay. The final grouping aerobic respiration so this is your long-term run this is going out and going for a, a long walk something that's uh steady state activity okay it's not a high burn fast sprint it's long duration lower intensity aerobic respiration oxygen comes into the body moves into the cells into the mitochondria of the cells and your mitochondria uses um the uh the the oxygen to produce massive amounts of atp okay so when your body can keep up with that oxygen intake, that becomes aerobic respiration, a lot of ATP produced through that. A couple things to understand. First of all, you've probably heard that long duration, lower activity burns more body fat. Now here's the simple answer. It's true, okay? Your body will utilize fatty acids in that aerobic respiration process as a fuel source. You're gonna burn more fat if you're doing a longer duration, lower intensity exercise. 
totally accurate. However, understand that if you have a shorter duration, higher intensity exercise, not only will you burn a lot of sugars, but you're gonna build a lot more muscle tone generally, you will still burn body fat on EPOC, which is excess post-exercise oxygen consumption. I don't dare you to say that five times fast. <laughs> and your, your body is going to end up utilizing a lot of excess body fat, even if you do that shorter duration, higher intensity exercise. And on top of that, with that, that format, you're generally going to challenge your cardiovascular system a little bit more. Um, you're going to produce more lean muscle tone. So that's the part that I'm driving at with this whole thing. Circle back to the question of what type of exercise should I do to make sure that I'm, that I'm burning the most energy, okay? That I'm increasing that overall energy burn. It comes down to this. Number one, any more activity that you do, beautiful any daily activity. When it comes to choosing your exercise, again, anything that you do is going to be good for your body. If you want to go for a five mile run, go for it. It's awesome for you. I will not stop you from doing that whatsoever. If you have the choice though, doing exercises that are both going to challenge your muscles and your cardiovascular system are going to be the most beneficial. And here again is why. You do something like HIIT training, high intensity interval training where you're doing squats for 45 seconds, then you take a 15 second break, then you're doing push-ups for 45 seconds, you're taking a 15 second break, then you're doing jumping jacks for 45 seconds, you're taking a 15 second break, and you're just, you're breathing super hard, your heart's hammering, boom, 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 but your muscles are burning as well, you're getting both effects, that's gonna help build up that lean muscle tone, okay, which again, we understand that especially as we age, that lean muscle tone can tend to decrease, so we wanna keep that up, keep our resting metabolic, uh, resting metabolic rate high, but you're also challenging your cardiovascular system. You're going to burn a lot of energy through that type of exercise. Strength training is another thing. If you're doing um, low rest, high repetition strength training, you're going to build good muscle tone and challenge your cardiovascular system at the same time. There's lots of videos that I have on the channel. You can check out where we're doing that type of format. Very minimal rest, a lot of repetitions, go, go, go. So generally speaking, that's the type of exercise that I would recommend for you to do in order to challenge your body in the correct way, to build up your muscle tone, to change your composition so that in the long run, your TDEE, your total daily, daily energy expenditure continues to stay high. Okay. So that about sums it up for that side of the equation. Let's talk real quick about the other side where we're decreasing the overall intake of food now there's a lot of apps out there that you can download a lot of websites you can check out generally speaking let's remember a calorie is a unit of energy that's all it is okay a measurement of how much energy comes out of your food so let's say a banana for example bananas don't have labels slapped on them we don't see a nutrition label on a banana so how do we know how much energy is in a banana well you can get on uh my fitness pal you can get on spark people you can get on um, just lose it you can go on nutritiondata.com there's so many resources you can ask google you can ask siri you can ask alexa how many calories are in a banana and more often than not you're going to get the answer okay people want to know how much energy is in their food and that's a really good thing so understanding how much energy you're taking in versus how much you're burning is a really big part of the equation now, I can't uh, take the time today. We're gonna do it in future videos to talk to you about. So how do we calculate this out based on your age, your height, your weight, your gender, your composition, your activity level? There are a lot of websites and apps that you can use that will help you figure that information out, okay? But we'll talk about that in some future videos. Couple things just to understand when your calorie intake, okay? Number one, please do not starve yourself, okay? The, generally speaking okay and this is just general i'm putting this out there for you guys this idea of like hey i'm eating a 1200 calorie diet okay i can't stand it i don't like it because your body needs energy to change itself okay you you can't starve yourself most people when you run the numbers their resting metabolic rate is going to be above 1200 you're already putting yourself way lower than what your body would just consume on its own and then you're adding in activity levels 
you have to give your body good energy. Okay, so you know, don't starve yourselves. Now, things like intermittent fasting and things like that, I'm actually a big fan of, um, but we'll talk about some of those in, in other videos, okay? So just generally thinking about this, I want you to understand basic, basic takeaway. I don't want you to starve your body. I want you to fuel your body so that it can make the changes that it needs to make, okay? So increase your activity, choose exercises that are gonna challenge your body, that are going to challenge your muscles and your cardiovascular, and generally speaking, decreasing your energy intake for most of us is the way that we want to go. That combination will force your body to dig into its extra body fat stores, and that'll help you reduce your overall body fat percentage. Now, last piece, I wanna give you a couple of practical takeaways, summarize some of this information so that you guys have some tools in your toolbox to make sure you can apply this to your lives. Takeaway number one, any increase in activity is beneficial, okay? When you become more active, you are doing better for your body, whatever that is. Whether again, it's just going to uh, the grocery store on foot instead of on the bus, whether it's uh, whatever, choosing to walk the dog an extra block or two, you know, whatever that activity level is, take the stairs as opposed to the elevator. These are, these are great activities, okay? Increase your activity level, it's beneficial for you. When it comes to your exercise, no matter what you choose, it's gonna be beneficial for you, okay? Any type of increase in exercise is great. Now, are there some that are a little more efficient than others? I believe so. Um, but you're not doing yourself wrong by just generally increasing your activity. Takeaway number one. Takeaway number two, don't just count your calories, make your calories count, okay? If you are um, in a spot where you've, you've figured out the numbers, you know your resting metabolic rate, you've added in your activity level, you've done the formulas to figure out, okay, I need to consume about 1,700 calories a day, I'm burning about 2,000 calories a day, that's an appropriate level, right? You shouldn't be burning 3,000 calories a day and eating 1,200, all right? So those are some, some things to keep in mind. But the calories that you do intake, whether you know the formulas and numbers or not, the energy you take in, the food that you eat, make your calories count, don't just count them, okay? So high nutrient dense foods, lots of fruits and vegetables, um, eat the rainbow, right? Uh, so not Skittles, but <laughs> the greens, the, the reds, the oranges, the yellows, the fruits and vegetables, eat whole foods, good lean proteins and meats. This is pretty um, straightforward stuff, stuff that we understand, but guys, hugely important to focus on. I have a nutrition video that you guys can check out on this channel as well to get some more ideas. Very, very important. Takeaway number two. Takeaway number three. Increase muscle tone, increase resting metabolic rate, and actually so much more. More energy, better protection for your joints. There's so much to be said about increasing your overall muscle tone. Again, listen to me, don't misunderstand me. If you wanna go for a long run, if you like long walks, that's totally fine, do those. But find other ways and other times to challenge your muscle tone, okay? Challenge your, your um, muscles by doing some sort of resistance training along with that. Perfect. You guys increase your muscle tone, you're gonna increase your overall health. Now, my last and final takeaway, number four, is kind of combined, here's some nutrition tips for you. Keep yourself hydrated. Decrease in water, check out my hydration video on this channel if you haven't gotten a chance to look at it yet. A decrease in your overall hydration will massively deter your ability to perform. And when you can't perform, when you can't do those extra activities, you're not building more muscle tone, you're not increasing your resting metabolic rate. Taking in some easily digested carbohydrates and proteins about an hour before your workout, an example, a piece of fruit and a hard boiled egg, that's gonna help give your body the energy you need to perform. And then after your workout, give your body some food. Refuel yourself, rehydrate yourself. Give yourself some good proteins, some good fruits and vegetables. Give your body the energy that it needs to change and grow. Okay, so takeaway number four, kind of circles back to number two, make those calories count. Okay, but give you a couple of little more practical application pieces. That's it for me today. I really hope that you guys took something out of this. I hope I didn't make your head spin. I hope it gave you some real practical, applicable ideas. I'm guessing you're walking away with a lot of questions still, and that's okay. 
We're going to continue to deliver information. We're going to continue to help you guys figure this out. Please post on this video, share it, like it, comment. I really want you guys to have the tools that you need. And all of this is coming from the research and the experience that I have had from being a trainer for many, many years. So I hope this helps. I hope this helps change the way that you are looking at these things, change the way you understand fitness and exercise and your own body. From revision training, let's change the way we look at it. Make it a strong day.